In every weapon category, there are those few weapons which are widely considered to be the best. But when it came to arc guns, things were just a tad unclear. That is, up until now. Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this mastery rank 8 arc gun, the Larkspur. I'm going to be giving you all the info you need regarding the weapon's functionality and how to build it. But that said, please keep in mind that my builds and guides follow a new player friendly approach. Simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Larkspur. Let's begin by having a look at how the weapon functions without any mods equipped. But first things first, in the last content update, well the last major content update, we got a brand new animation for calling down our arch guns. And as you can see, you get an AoE knockdown effect with a range of 10 meters. Now it doesn't do any real damage, but you do have that crowd control component. Now when it comes to the Larkspur, in order to get the most out of the weapon, we're gonna have to understand exactly how the two fire modes function, and this one is gonna be long, so please bear with me. The primary fire mode is best described as a better Amprax. As you can see, you got a frontal beam with a whopping range of 40 meters. Now, let's take a quick measurement. I don't think I can get more than this right now. There you go, 35 meters, and I'm still able to comfortably hit my targets. And as you can see, the primary beam is chaining two additional targets, and you can have a maximum of five enemies hit at a time without the use of punch through. Now, if you choose to go for punch through, of course, your primary beam is gonna go through multiple targets and therefore generate additional chains. Now that said, the range of the chain seems to be 4 meters from my own bias testing, the wiki states 6, but to me it looks a bit more like 4. And I think that's pretty much it with one major exception. If we compare this to the Amprax, the Amprax loses 50% of its damage with each and every single jump and it appears that the Larkspur also suffers from this mechanic, but to a lesser degree. From my own testing, it looks like 20-ish percent of the damage is lost with each and every single jump. But again, this is a pretty ugly thing to measure. So if you guys want to double check, by all means, go right for it. And that's pretty much it for the primary fire. As for the secondary fire, you can get access to this by pressing your middle mouse button. And if you're on controller, I have no clue what you press if you're on controller, but you get access to this big plasma bomb of sorts. Now, this one needs to be charged up, and as you can see, it comes with a guaranteed knockdown effect, just like in the case of the static ore. But the projectile also has a couple of additional quirks, and when I say quirks, it has infinite body punch through. Yeah, I didn't know what that means either, but as you can see, the projectile will be able to go through all of the targets within a line. As you can see, it's still traveling. The problem with an approach such as this is that you're not generating that big bada boom explosion. By the way, the area of the explosion, that huge explosion, is 8 meters. Absolutely fantastic. So if you're gonna aim like this for headshots, it's definitely not the best approach because you wanna get the explosion damage, which accounts for about 70-75% of the total damage on your secondary fire so rejoice console guys in this case aim for the feet does apply what else oh yeah this one also does self damage as well i'm invulnerable but that one would have probably killed me one more thing the projectile while it does have travel time it doesn't have any drop off as you can see it is straight as an arrow so it's not going to be falling down or whatnot so it's a bit easier to aim and one last thing, and I promise this is actually the last thing, you can hold the charge in for about 3 seconds after it's fully charged. And then the weapon automatically discharges and it consumes 10 ammo per explosion. And you cannot release half a shot, you gotta charge it all the way through. And again, 3 seconds maximum hold time after it's fully charged. Okay, I'm done. Let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. And for that we're gonna have to go to select mode vehicles and then into arch guns. Keep in mind that you will be seeing some stat differences between arcwing mode and atmosphere mode, mostly in the range department. Now if we're gonna jump into stats, my mod capacity is 60 out of 60 and if your mod capacity is only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and install the auto king catalyst and only then you can install the gravi mag which will allow it to use it as a heavy weapon. You get the blueprint for the gravi mag from your dojo. Next, how many forma? Now I got three on mine and this is what I recommend to you guys as well. Keep in mind that there are no prime mods for arch guns and there are no ribbons currently but the developer did state that they will be introducing them in a update somewhere down the line and we will be getting them from arbitrations unless they change their minds. Now the weapon does come with a default V or Madurai, I recommend two more Vs and a dash. 
When it comes to the primary fire, we got an accuracy of 8.3, but if you look at it just as a number, it doesn't really reflect how easy it is to actually hit your enemies with that fat beam. Critical stats are underwhelming, only 10% base critical chance and 1.4x critical multiplier. Needless to say, this is a status weapon, at least for primary shot, as you can see the base status chance is 50%. Fire rate of 12, which is pretty good, a huge magazine of 100 and a reload of 2.5 seconds. A tad on the lengthy side, but considering the magazine, this one is all good. And we got impact and radiation by default. When you have an elemental combo on your weapon by default, treat it as a very last mod somewhere around here. When it comes to the secondary fire mode, we got an accuracy of 100, a charge rate of 0.5, critical chance and critical multiplier much better, 26% with 2.2x. Of course, it's a big bada boom and you want it to crit. Of course, same magazine and same reload and the fire rate is 1.0. Status chance is a tad lower, however, only 34%. And when you look at the damage, you see impact, radiation and blast. And the impact applies to the projectile physically hitting the target. The radiation and the blast you get from the explosion. So again, aim for the feet does apply. Now let's move into a standard build and we're going to be discussing exactly what kind of build options you have for this one. We got damage with Rubedo line, barrel critical chance and critical damage through parallax scope and hollowed bullets and we got even more critical chance and critical damage with critical focus. Now this one is a bit of a pain to get. It is farmed from the first orb mummy encounter down on Fortuna but I'll be honest here I farmed that one at least 50 kills up until this point. I have never seen critical focus or sabot rounds drop so bear that one in mind. On the trade chat PC this one costs between 50 and 100 ish plat but once again check Warframe market. Multi shot is a must and of course we're gonna go with dual round 60% multi shot. Now I have an elemental combo on my weapon. I used the two 120% mods and I didn't use the 60-60 mods because I'm building corrosive on my weapon and I'm going to be shooting level 120 corrupted heavy gunners. If I go for the 60-60 mods then this one overstrips like all hell and you will see exactly what I mean in practice. As for my option slot I went with Sabot round. 60% more damage and 3 meters worth of punch rule. Again the punch rule will help with the AOE and all whatnot and damage is always good. But here's another good option automatic trigger. If you're finding that your kill time is not where you want it to be you can go for some fire rate just keep in mind that adding fire rate to an arch gun will also increase its downtime at the same time now what you can do to decrease your downtime however is go for ammo chain and get maximum ammo and you can also use ammo case from the carrier more ammo on your arch gun increases its uptime simply because it doesn't affect the cooldown that your arch guns have so bear that one in mind this is the initial build we're going to be testing now let's see what kind of punch does the larkspur carry we're gonna be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Gunners level 120 and this time I think I'm gonna spawn my Arc Gun somewhere around here. Arc Gun, yes I know, Arc Gun, not Arch Gun, fine, whatever. Now we're gonna go for primary fire initially just so you can see exactly how wonderful does that punch work and I'm hitting basically everybody and there's not a big issue with overstrip when it comes to the primary targets but for the secondary targets you will see that I am removing the armor almost completely from these targets and you might say so what's the problem aren't you doing more damage now since the armor is gone because that would be a logical thing to say but unfortunately not because with the armor gone on that target I no longer have my 75% bonus damage that Corrosive has versus ferrite armor, so bear that one in mind. Of course, this is only gonna be an issue in high level content and against armor targets. If you're going down to Fortuna and all whatnot, then you simply build gas or toxin, use the 6060 mods, since there we can't really have an overstrip issue and all whatnot. Now that is one way to go about it, but we didn't really use the secondary fire, the big bada boom explosion with a higher critical chance and critical damage. So let's use that one next. The problem is, if I'm gonna shoot them right now, I'm simply gonna send them off the platform and they're not gonna die, it's, they're not gonna die from a single shot, so let me showcase that, there you go, it did basically nothing, but these guys are going all over the place, so what you wanna do, ideally, is hit your targets till about, you wanna remove kinda like half their armor, something like that, and then switch to your secondary fire mode and just blow them to kingdom come, and of course that is a fatality. I love the gun. What can I say guys? I absolutely love this gun. It has become my new favorite arch gun. The problem with arch guns, somehow I always forget to activate them when I'm in a mission. Maybe it's a problem with me being too used to having just primary, secondary and melee on my uh, loadout and all whatnot. But they are absolutely fantastic and the Larkspur can absolutely shred basically any content in Warframe. No, not viable for Eidolon Hunt. Stop it. Just, just bloody stop it. 
Now there's one more thing which we can do, bump up everything with Warframe buffs and I know you guys want to see what I want to see, Lady Mirage Prime. Now let's check out them buffs and all whatnot. Corrosive projection is ideal when you're going versus Grenier, but keep in mind that you don't have any amp aura when it comes to arch guns. So when it comes to the aura, it's totally up to you. Pistol amp, rifle amp, whatever amp will not apply to arch guns. But arcanes will on the other hand, but not arcanes that reference primary or secondary weapons. So something like range will simply not work. My recommendation to you guys would be to either go for your commodity ones, maybe your barrier, your energize and all whatnot, or just go for critical chance. Where are you with Avenger? I really don't like what they did with the new, whatchamacallit, interface. Now, we're gonna be using two Arcane Avengers, and yes, they do stacks. Do your own testing if you don't believe me. On damage, 14% chance for 30% critical chance for 8 seconds. Now, this one is a bonus additive after, so it simply stacks on top of what you already have. So, we're gonna be going with two, so therefore 60% and Lady Mirage Prime. Spawn the target one more time. Activate Mirage's free ability for a massive damage increase and now we're gonna be calling down our arch gun so we don't knock down the target. Switch to secondary fire mode, activate the clones and get ready for my favorite magic trick of now you see them, now you don't. Yes my friends, that is a full blown one shot on a whole pack of corrupted heavy gunners. And by the way, the orange crit, that is proof that Arcane Avenger actually stacks on top of each other. So bear that one in mind. Yes, the weapon can be fantastically powerful as you can see, but I am using some rather extreme Warframe buffs. You can use these as well, but Mirage would have a bit of a hard time actually staying alive versus that many corrupted heavy gunners. But there's still the primary shot, right? Absolutely. So let's switch to primary fire. Let's see if these guys can actually hit us a couple of times so we get our procs from Arcane Avenger. And as you can see, the weapon can absolutely melt high level targets with no issue at all. This is my brand new favorite gun. I love it and I recommend it to just about anyone. If you can get your hands on this one, go to your clan, get the blueprint, get the gravy mag and enjoy this one. It is absolutely outstanding. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, then by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you want to suggest a particular weapon review. Now in all honesty I can't guarantee you that it will be done by next time or even within a week because these things kind of take a bit of time to make but I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time my friends, bye bye.